Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and I'm back today with a video that's a bit of a departure for me. But I said in an earlier video that I was going to show you how to draw these uh, elements I used in a seascape scene for my February 2022 uh, bullet art journal. I'll provide a link to that up there if you'd like to go and check that out. But this is that video that I talked about. We're going to go from really, really simple all the way to finished item and I'm going to show you how I work my way through this stuff. I promise you you'll be able to follow along. The reason I'm confident about that is because I'm sure we can all remember being children and how difficult it was to learn to write. Can you remember when you were given a pencil and you had to try and teach your fingers and your little tiny muscles how to form shapes, how to form letters, how to get the letters to sit on the top of a line in a lined book. I can remember how difficult it was to do that. I'm, I'm thinking of a G now and I just, it was so hard. I remember it being hard to learn how to write and yet we didn't give up. We kept going. We, uh, even when the, line, the words went up the page or down the page, or when our letters were back to front, because I know I did that, I'm sure most of us did, but we kept going, didn't we? We didn't give up. We learned how to work with that pencil. Month in and month out, we were working at writing. Writing is not something that comes naturally to anybody. You have to learn and you have to give yourself time and you have to repeat those little exercises, repeat those actions of using a pencil to make meaningful marks on a piece of paper. It's the same with drawing. So when I'm drawing, the way that I do it is I look for the simple shapes and then I work up from the shape. So you might see these images and think I've just drawn those. I've practiced. They, they didn't just happen. I didn't just sit down and think, oh, okay, I'll start at the head and I'll draw this and then I'll draw some fronds around it. It took some thought and some planning and, uh, and practice. So when I'm drawing, it's um, practice, then it's pencil marks, then it's inking it in, and then it's maybe colouring it. So that's my process that I go through. But I don't just sit down and draw something. I don't just sit down and paint something because I'm not a natural artist. I have to work at it. There are many, many really, really good artists and illustrators out there on YouTube who can teach you really good methods for how they draw. And I've got a couple of examples for you and I'll provide them in the link below the video. Just have a look for Johanna Basford or Shada Campbell. I think they're fantastic teachers. But I wanted to show you my way. Because I'm not an expert, I thought it might give you some comfort uh, to try and learn from somebody who's just a wee bit ahead of the road uh, in front of you, who's just a little bit more uh, practised uh, perhaps than you are. And my theory is that if you can write, you can draw. So let me show you how I do this. I said I think in simple shapes. So let's say I want to draw a little tree or a little branch. Start with the line, plain line, and then do V shapes. A V there, a V there, all down the stem, and a V there. I'll make that a bit longer. So to put leaves on this, I do a diamond. Really, really easy shape to do. I include a part of the branch because that looks like the leaf is coming off the branch. It looks like it's attached rather than if you did it like that. I think including that little line makes it look a little bit more, I don't want to say real because we're not really drawing real things here, but it anchors it, doesn't it, to the drawing. Now, if you can't draw uh, diamond shapes, don't think of it as a diamond shape. Think of it as a V and then you're going to put a hat on top of the V. So it's a V and then a hat on top of the V. And this is how you build up your confidence. That's a very static little image. That's OK. We're practising. We're not doing the final image. That's the other thing to remember. When you first sit down to do this, you're not looking for the perfect final version. You want to have a little practice, get used to these shapes first. So let's give this some movement and let's give it a little shape like that, a simple curve. And now, instead of doing regular V-shaped lines off our branch, let's alternate them. So let's do them like this. And we can put a little curve on them if we want. And curve it up that way. And go back to doing our diamonds. Again, they're attached to the stem. And if you find that the diamond is going to go behind the first diamond, 
do that, just do that shape. It'll make it look more real if they're not exactly accurate and they're not exactly symmetrical. This is where you begin to build in a little bit of movement and you prevent them from looking too static and too plain. So now we have a nice little branch with some uh, little leaves on it. So what if we want to uh, take that the next stage further? And this is how you can begin to experiment. We'll start with our curved line. And this time I'm going to do more emphasised different branches. I'm going to curve these up. I'm going to curve these out like this. And this time when I do my diamond shape or my V with a hat on it, I'm going to just curve it a tiny bit. With this one, I'm going to take it up here so it sort of appears to go behind the first leaf. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try elongating them. So if you want to do um, a variety of branches, this is how you can begin to experiment. What happens if I do it longer? What happens if I curve my diamond like that? You get greater movement into what you're trying to draw. I could sit and do these all day. And sometimes I do. <laughs> I can't lie, I really like doing these little things. But if you want to make a scene using these, let's add some branches in here. And don't be scared to take them behind something you've already drawn. And we do the same again. There's my V. And if I curve the top up, I get more movement into my leaf. There's my V, curve it, make it a little bit longer. It gives it real life. And before you know it, you're drawing branches. There's my V and a curve on it. And here I'm going to take this behind this leaf. You just sort of draw through it. Don't draw over it, just draw through it. And there we have built up a scene. So I hope that shows you how you can go from very static to varying it a little bit to making something really quite nice. Now if you wanted to vary this, if you wanted to add something to this, you could do some berries. We could pop in berries here. And then if you were to colour these in red, this is not a real tree, <laughs> a real branch of any uh, tree that I've seen, it doesn't matter. It's about uh, making something that will fit in with maybe if you want to do some journaling, you want to get some colour in there. That's just a fun way that you can use and develop and expand your branches. I use this shape a lot in my uh, February bullet journal layout and it started again with a simple line and then because I like to link things to letters where I can like the V shape here this is a continuous N or if you like it's a continuous M and I'm just doing these little N shapes until I get to the top I'll put an N on the top there and I come back down again. And at the moment I'm not making these join up to that central stem. But of course if you wanted to, you could try that to see how it looked. So if we join them, it does give it a slightly different look. So making a tiny little adjustment to how you draw something can really impact it, can really make it look different. So again, let's add some life into this. And let's put a curve on there. And then we do our little ends or M's. This time I'm going to attach them to the stem. And that looks like it's moving, perhaps in a breeze or perhaps through water. Um, and then you can continue to experiment. So if I wanted to make a little cluster of these, let's have another stem that comes out like this. And what happens if I elongate that N? And if I don't attach it, you get a very slight difference, but it does create a difference. And so you're actually drawing the same thing repeatedly, but you're making it look as if it has more variation in it than it actually does have. And you can keep varying what you're drawing until you find something that works for whatever it is that you're trying to do. So as in this one here, that I prepared earlier, you can see that by doing this and continuing to do these little curved lines and then drawing the ends around the side of the line, you get, before you know it, you've got a little scene for under the water. Let's move on to doing some sort of seagrass. 
if you're confident with what you've learned doing your branches and, and uh, your little weeds here, you can go straight into doing this kind of thing. But if you're not confident about going there immediately, this is where you start. So it's basically just a shape like this. It goes up, it comes down at an angle, and it goes back to the start of the, the line, whatever you're working on. And then maybe a thinner one with a sharper angle of a line. And maybe a short, fat one here. And this one behind it, like that. So that is basically the shape of the seaweed. This is the uh, middle stage. So we would go up and instead of making this a set of sharp angles here, we just soften those angles a little bit like that. And the same with the next one. And just soften it and do some curves. That will give it movement. Let's start here and curve up here. And it doesn't matter what shape your curve is. You're creating seagrass. And then when you're confident, you can add the line drawings in the middle that follow the line of the leaf like this, so that you give your leaf a real sense of dimension. A starfish starts with a dot and then you do five little legs on your starfish and imagine a clock, so that's 12 o'clock, that's two o'clock, that's four o'clock, that's eight o'clock and we go back to ten o'clock. That's the basic shape of a starfish. So how do you make these nice little arms come off it? So the best way that I've found to describe this is you give it five little smiles. So you've got your clock shape and you put a little smile in here, just in between those two lines. Or to go back to our letter writing analogy, it's a U. And then go to the top and join it onto the line, like that. So you go to the top and you're joining it onto the line. Or you can go the other way up, join it onto the line. So you're not trying to draw a starfish. You're taking the basic elements and you're joining them up. I couldn't draw a starfish without doing this first. And then when you practice it and you get more confident with your line placements and you get more confident with the little U-shape placements, you can begin to soften this so that you really do get those nice sort of curved arms that a starfish has. I'm doing this quickly but you can see the way it transforms. And then when you're confident with that, if you want to add detail, add some little bubbles in the centre of it. So uh, it will have your central bubble here and then little bubbles radiating out and it will give your starfish a little bit more character. And then if you want to vary that, instead of having these curved arms all static, you can move them about slightly so they can go in slightly different directions. I won't do any more because you can see I need to start from this place. But that's how you can make your starfish come to life a little bit more. I really loved doing these shells. I wanted to do a scallop, a little scallop shell in my journal book. This is what I wanted to do, these little scallop shells here. But I didn't know how to draw a scallop. So I found some pictures online, just very simple pictures, and I broke down the shape. And a scallop, as you can see here, starts with a right angle. Very simple little right angle. And it has a curve on the top. So that's the start of your scallop shell. Then it has this little extra rectangle at the bottom. So I start with my right angle here. And I do my little curve on the top. And at the bottom, it seems to sit in a little rectangle. That's the easiest way that I can find to describe it. So then when you want to do your scallop shell proper, you know its shape, you're familiar with its shape because you've practiced this a few times. And then if you want to make it look more lively, you add tiny little ends again along the top to give it this scalloped edge. And then to make it look more real, you bring in some lines 
some shading that show you how the shell runs like that and then if you want you can add some tiny little almost dotted lines just across the shell like that to give it a sense of shape just to curve it up this shell I was so pleased with the end result of this shell because if you look at a photograph, I don't know what this shell is called, they all have different names, I don't know what this one is called, but its basic shape is this. It is a sort of a hill, but it doesn't come down to the same level as this uh, line does. It has a little tail. So it's a hill with a tail and then it has this sort of curve underneath. So that's your basic shell shape. So then to take that to the next level, which you would, so you'd practice this shape, then go and practice this with the, the bottom here. And this time we want to give it a bit more life, so we're going to add in some curved lines. And these are where the shell does this little thing at the front. Just some curved lines, curving like that. And those lines will also help to give the shell a sense of 3D. And then just add a little bit of a loop outside of the shell itself. It makes it look as if it's got ridges in it. And again, these are simple shapes. These are little end shapes. And then it has a little bloop on the end like that. Don't know what that's called. It's just a bloop. And then once you've got these in place, you can begin to add almost dotted lines to create the shell and then underneath as well to give it a sense of direction. I'm going to ink this one in because I want you to see how to do these little little bits here that give the shell real life. So you're just curving a little bit from the top of the shell there. You don't have to complete these lines, you can leave them like this it's got a little bloop on the end there. And then, don't forget your little tail. I hope you can see that, that gives you this rather nice little shell. And then you can shade from here. That gives it a nice sense of life, I think. And then you've got your rather nice little lines here that help show the curve of the shell. Tiny little dotted lines and there's a shell and if you want to make it look like it's sitting really solidly you can play around with the shading. So I just took my pencil and I just shaded where the shell lifts up from wherever it's uh, sitting, whatever it's lying on. I just shaded part way up the shell and only a tiny little bit underneath where it's actually sitting because most of the shadow would fall where the um, shell was creating shade beneath itself. And that gives it a real sense of uh, anchoring it onto the page. These angelfish couldn't be simpler. It's a right angle on a triangle. That's its basic shape. And then you have another little triangle at the back here for its tail. So then to build some reality into that, there's our starting shape. And this time we're going to curve a line into the centre like that. And then we add the tail, that little very basic triangle. You can sort of fray the end of its tail and give it an eye. And then if you want to uh, make it look more like a little fish, you can give it these curves here. They just make it look more fishy. And then bubbles, nice little bubbles, different sizes. When uh, Johanna Basford talks about doing bubbles, she gives you a great tip. She says, do a little bubble, smaller bubble behind a big bubble. And then it looks as if they're sort of going up blah, 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 all the way up to, <laughs> to the top, <laughs> wherever bubbles go. And then you have these tiny little fish here. These are so simple. These are like teardrops. Imagine a teardrop on its side. That's a teardrop. You can do a little collection of them, a little shoal of teardrops like that. And then it's a triangle, a really squashy triangle, on the back for the tail. And a little eye. And they're great fun to do. 
they appear in uh, nearly every time I do my sea scenes they arrive in that shape uh, in that sort of shoal and then you can do a band on them if you want to add some variation to them. Coral is uh, quite a simple shape as well. It doesn't look, if you look at this, you think, ooh, it's too complicated. But if you draw it back here, take it back to the start, it's a line and then it has some lines going across the top, getting smaller as they go up. And then what you're going to do basically is join this up. So you start from the base, you join up that one and it's uh, the coral has its little detail on the top like that. So you do your wobbly shapes, which are tall ends, and then take it back up the stem and do some wobbly ends again and take it back up to connect with the next line that you've got in place. And this way you don't forget, as I have done in the past, you don't forget uh, that the, the sort of coral shape forms on the top rather than on the underside because we're drawing this nice and simple. Got a nice little end shapes. Take it up, connect it to that one there. Do your tall ends, take it back to the stem, curve around, connect up again, and there you have a little coral. The one that gave me the most joy to do, I think, was this little seahorse because I worked it out. I actually worked it out. It's an S shape with a bit more of an emphasis at the top of the S than at the bottom of the S. And then you add the extra elements of the sea, the seahorse. <laughs> I was going to call it a sea fish. Um, so let's start with our funny S with the weight at the top of the S and then it just sort of drops away like that. Then we have a circle at the top here, which is its head. Fill in that S shape like this and give him a little tail. One of the things I observed about uh, seahorses is that funny little nose that they have. What it is, is um, it's this sort of a shape. So it's like this, but it's not a square end. It's a shaped end, like that. I hope you can see that. So it's shaped like that. So it cuts off at a sort of an angle. And I found that was the key. That angle on its little nosy thing and its forehead. The forehead is where the eye sits and it gives it a sort of this nice warm humorous look. You can see in this version, when I was just drafting this out and just playing with it, I could see that I hadn't done the forehead high enough. It really comes up quite straight. So let's try that. There's its funny little nose that cuts off at an angle. And then this forehead comes up from this circle that you've drawn here. It comes up really quite steeply and then let's finish that shape let's bring it down to give it a neck so now we have a seahorse that has a bit of a neck so then how do you get this sort of ridged look to it it's um, a U again so what we do once we're happy with this and the eye will sit about here it's this U shape repeated you go all down the body of the seahorse. And to give it some added dimension, to make it look like it's a 3D creature, just take some lines in from where your, if you have your, uh, your U shapes doing this, just bring in some lines from those pointed bits. on both sides and where he's wide add a little extra line in there don't make them join up because that will make it look static again so try and keep this distinction between um, where the lines start and end and where the middle line might be and that's our basic seahorse and then you can angle his little chin like this and he ends up being quite a handsome thing. A jellyfish. A jellyfish is really uh, refreshingly simple. It starts with an oval. So there's our little oval. You can draw an oval. I'm not very good actually at drawing ovals, but it does start with that shape. And then to uh, give the uh, jellyfish movement, put the oval on its side, like that. 
and then do two little curves just on the top of your oval and then you draw a bigger sort of a mushroom arch shape and you can see already that's so much a jellyfish isn't it and then to do these sort of uh, things that come out the bottom of a jellyfish I haven't researched this I don't know what they're called but these little things that come out of the jellyfish if you look closely you'll see that it's essentially um, our, re our weed drawing <laughs> from earlier that's all you need to do so they come out of the jellyfish make them nice and long and trailing two curved lines like that and then we do these little loose ends again all the way up the side of our jellyfish I'm doing this rather quickly but I hope it's enough to show you and then you just have uh, simple little lines coming out you might have a curvy line and that is uh, a jellyfish and if you want to uh, mix it up a bit, little bit there are some uh, jellyfish that I've seen when we've been swimming off the uh, off the sea off the coast of England and they've got these I think they're called moon moon jellyfish and they've got these sort of um, well they've got these little holy things in the top of their heads and um, yeah I don't know a great deal about jellyfish anatomy I'm going to come completely clean so then how do you make all of that you take all of those elements you practice them and you want to make them into a scene this is uh, this is how I do it this is what I've learned now I've mostly learned this from watching Shada Campbell's videos where she blocks out uh, or plans out her drawings so here is my plan I know I'm going to have it going on this sort of an axis so this is where you would choose if you wanted it to be a circle maybe you would want everything to be um, going uh, from right to left I'm choosing to work from left to right so I've got myself just the outline of half a square like that I've put in a very very rough jellyfish at the top here I've got some rough uh, little C fronds down here. I've got my plan so I can pop in a bit of coral and then I've done some triangles here for my angelfish and then behind that I've, I've thought right I'll have some more of the lumpy weeds, the N-shaped weeds and then I'll have some of my lovely little branches um, which may or may not be a C um, foliage but they are in my picture and then I'm going to have a little shoal of fish here. So that's where I start from and this is where it ends up. I'm going to ink this in, uh, I'm going to fast forward it but I want you to see how you go from a plan to a finished version. This is my pencil version. If there's anything in the pencil version that you're not happy with this is the time to change it because as I've discovered um, inking something in doesn't then make it a better drawing, it just makes it wrong. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have a go at inking this in for you. And there is our finished uh, sea scene and I hope this encourages you so even if you aren't interested in drawing sea scenes I hope it encourages you to maybe try drawing some other things that you might be interested in. Now I'd be really curious to know um, what uh, you all think about this approach to uh, time trying to draw things. If this was helpful to you, if this is encouraging to you, if you'd like to see more of these sorts of videos do let me know in the comments below because I'm guided by you and if you want to see it I'll continue to try and do it. So that way we all learn together, which is just brilliant. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. And until we meet again, stay safe and take care.